Hi guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. Today's video is going to be a punch needle project. So I'm gonna go over all the supplies that you need and then we're gonna jump right into how to create this really pretty kind of boho rainbow design. And before we jump right into the tutorial, I did want to thank today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by May Deer, which is a really great website filled with all sorts of fun DIY embroidery kits. If you're into that kind of thing, you're really going to love all that they have to offer. They have cross stitch patterns. They have stamped cross stitch kits, which is probably what I'm most excited to try. They have diamond paint kits, which my daughter's actually trying right now. She's seven or actually eight years old um, and she's loving it. Uh, they have macrame stuff, puzzles, all sorts of things. So as you can see here in this kit, it comes with everything that you need to make this really beautiful embroidery kit with the night sky and the tree. This is the stamped cross stitch kit, which is like I said, the one I'm most excited about. Uh, my kids really love butterflies and moths. So I thought this would be fun to do and hang up like in our homeschool room or area. And so as you can see, it comes with the pattern just like regular cross stitch um, kits come with. But what makes it unique is that the actual cloth that you're punching onto is stamped. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of it if you've ever done a cross stitch kit where you had to look at the pattern and then kind of try to figure out where to put the stitches. Um, this is gonna make it so much easier. So what I'm holding right now is what you stitch on. So you can see it tells you exactly where to put the stitches, which is really wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm super excited about this. So in addition to that, they also have some punch needle kits, like I said, embroidery kits. So it comes with everything that you need to make, um, you know, the art yourself. So they are having a semi-annual site-wide sale up to 50% off right now. These prices are super good. Um, and in addition to that, you can take 10% off if you use the coupon code Kristen. So I will have a link to their website down below. I will have the coupon code on the screen for you to see and you will be able to go over to the website and stack that coupon code on top of the already wonderful sales that they have on their website. So the things that you're going to need for this project are a punch needle. So I recommend this one. It has an adjustable needle on it so you can do larger punches, smaller punches like that. So you'll need that. You'll need the threader. Um, you, typically these come with a threader um, and then you'll need some sort of marker, pencil, something that you can draw on your monk's cloth with. You'll need a pair of scissors. Um, you will need a pattern or of course you could freehand this. This pattern is available in my Etsy shop as well as a bunch of other punch needle patterns and kits. Um, whether you are coming here because you already purchased a kit and you're trying to learn how to do it or you're just here for to learn how to punch needle and how, get some inspiration, um, this video is for you. All right, so let's start by getting our monk's cloth in our hoop. So, what we're gonna do is take your inner hoop and lay it down and then just place the monk's cloth right over the top and you want it kind of you know as even as you can get it and then go ahead and pop your top hoop on and this is the same exact same way that you would do it if you were using the bamboo hoop the exact same way this loosens it has an inner circle same thing so before I tighten it back really tight uh, the same for the bamboo hoop. I'm gonna turn it over and just make sure that my monk's cloth is pulled really tightly all the way around. So this is really just going to help your punch needle project. Oops. This is going to help your punch needle project just go more smoothly. It's gonna be easier to punch uh, through the monk's cloth. So just go ahead and go around and pull everything nice and tight. And once you're happy with it, you can flip it back over and tighten it up all the way. Step now is going to be to trace your pattern onto your piece. So place it however you would like. I like to try to get mine kind of centered, of course. Make sure I have it rotated the right way. And then keep in mind too that this cloth is movable so once you're done with your project you will be able to take it out and you could rotate your cloth or or shift it a little bit so if you don't get this part just perfect I would not stress out about it and then I'm just going to use my felt tip marker and kind of hold this in place and just go ahead and mark 
all the way around my rainbow. I'm doing a like some different tones of purple today, but I also have an option in my Etsy shop for pink. So there's like a light pink and a dark pink option as well instead of the light and dark purple. So if you're interested in that, um, I have that option as well. All right, so we have our rainbow all traced. Now it's time to go ahead and get our punch needle threaded and ready to go. Here's the punch needle for this project. I am gonna be using it on the shortest setting, which is D. You can make the longer stitches if you're trying to do something a little more dramatic. Um, I'm just gonna keep it on the lowest one, which is D. Um, your punch needle should come with a threader. I misplaced mine, so I use this little piece of wire that has a loop at the end. So I'm gonna show you how to thread your punch needle now. So what we wanna do is take the looped end of the threader and stick it through the back of your punch needle through this hole. And then you're gonna stick it down kind of the center of your punch needle until it sticks out the other side. Just like that. And once it sticks out the other side, this is where you're going to place your yarn. So for my first rainbow stripe, I'm going to use this kind of light medium purple color. Kind of this beautiful plum, light kind of plum color. So while it's sticking out here, your loop, you're gonna put your yarn through. Just loop it through like that, just like you're threading a needle. And then you're going to pull. And your yarn should come up through the center of the punch needle and then also through the hole. You need to make sure it goes through that hole too or it will not work correctly. So now I'm just gonna pull up some of the excess. We don't have a, a ton of excess sticking out there. Make sure that you have extra yarn. You want slack in your yarn here. If you do not have slack in your yarn, it'll pull the stitches right back out of your monk's cloth. So you definitely don't want that. And then just choose where you want to get started. I'm gonna start over here in this corner. So here I am with the punch needle. I'm kind of, my, the kind of open side of the punch needle is facing the direction that I'm going to punch. Like I'm gonna be going that way, so I'd have it open that way. So I'm just gonna start right here on this corner. So you're gonna punch through. Then you're going to flip your piece over and pull, don't pull the yarn from inside of your needle. You wanna pull the yarn that's, the, 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 the yarn that's sticking out on the other side. So see, just like that. Again, making sure we have plenty of excess over here. And now we're gonna get started punching. So as I mentioned, the open side's gonna be going the direction that I'm going. And I'm just gonna keep it, kinda keep my needle touching the monk's cloth and then punch back in. Let me zoom you in here so you can see better. So here, Skim it right across the top till I'm ready to punch back in. Skim it right across the top, punch. You can make these stitches, you know, pretty spread apart. You can make them super close together. It's totally up to you. And we're just gonna do this all the way around the outside of the rainbow. So we're gonna punch all the way here. We're gonna come around and then go back up this way. And then I'll show you how to do the next row of stitches along this edge. So as you can see, we made our way all the way around and once we come back to our original stitch, we are going to be placing our stitches in between, almost like you're laying bricks, in between the stitches. So let me show you what I mean. So see, I'm going here. Let me zoom you in. In between that stitch. So I'm not meeting the stitches you know, with what I did before, I'm going like kind of in the middle of the stitch before. And using just that same technique of kind of gliding the punch needle across the surface, 
keeping slack in my yarn. And I'm gonna do this all the way around and just keep making my rows on this until I completely fill in the kind of medium purple color on this rainbow. All right, so as you can see, I have filled in this purple color. So to end a color and move on to the next, you're going to stick your punch needle into your project just wherever you ended your last punch. Flip it over, and this time you want to pull the yarn from inside of your needle. So pull, just get some extra. You want a little bit of a tail here, and then we're just gonna clip it off like that, and then you can pull your punch needle through, and then that is that. So we've completed that one. Now to move on to our next color, I'm gonna be using this kind of cream color. We're gonna do the exact same thing that we did before. All right, so as you can see, we finished the boho rainbow. I think it turned out really cute. Like I said, I think it'd be great in a little girl's room or um, you know, in a nursery. I also think it'd be neat to embroider maybe a name down here or something, you know, some sort of dream, you know, something like dream or something like that. I think that would be fun as well. Um, so I'll show you how to finish off your piece. So if you are working in you know, one of these plastic ones that you don't want to display your piece on, then you'll remove it um, and we'll put it on a different, like a wooden embroidery hoop. If you made your punch needle on a wooden embroidery hoop, you're still going to remove it. This is an optional thing, um, but I like to add a backing to it because as you can see, the backing is not very pretty. So, and yeah, it's just gonna be hanging on the wall, but I still think it's nice to make it look good. So I like to cut any extra pieces that are hanging off that might show through. And then I'm gonna take just my plain piece of cotton fabric and lay it on the back and that's gonna cover it. And then we're going to put it back into our wooden hoop just like we did before. And there will be like a little mark kind of where it was, so that makes it a little easier. And then place your hoop back on the top. All right, so once you have it on there, pull everything nice and tight again. You want everything to be nice and snug. And then I actually have filmed several other videos showing exactly how to do this. So I'm gonna insert a clip now where you will see how I cut the white fabric and use my hot glue gun to glue this onto the hoop. And that would make it, you know, permanently like attached to this hoop so you could hang it up and like I said, like a little girl's room, wherever. Um, so, so I'm gonna remove it from here and set that aside. And I'm going to basically remount it onto this embroidery hoop. So first, go ahead and lay down your piece of cotton over the um, just the plain circle of the embroidery hoop, and then lay your punch needle project over the top, and just try to line it up with the edges that you already had marked. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and place the top over it. And it needs to be loosened a little bit to fit. Here we go. So before I tighten it up, let's go ahead and turn it over and pull everything nice and tight. You don't want it to be loose, creating wrinkles and such on the front. So just give everything a nice tight tug. And if everything looks good, everything's positioned the way that you want. I think I'm actually gonna bump this down a little bit more. Let me see if I can just pull it. There we go, looks better. Go. So now we can go ahead and tighten it up, just like that. All right, so this first step is going to be to go ahead and cut the edges of this cotton um, pretty short. So we're gonna go all the way down pretty short. I need to sharpen my scissors just like this. We're gonna go all the way around and then we're going to use the monk's cloth to fold over. We're gonna put some hot glue here on the edge and then fold over like that and that's gonna be the way we kind of seal it up and make the back of the project look nice and pretty instead of all the yarn and such sh showing through. Okay, now it's time to cut our monk's cloth. We're gonna cut with about, maybe about a half of an inch left. We're gonna leave about a half an inch, I should say, all the way around. Hot glue gun is nice and warmed up, so all we're gonna do is just take it around the edge here, and little bit by little bit, wrap the monk's cloth around the embroidery hoop and do that all the way around. So there you have it. It's all nice and finished up. So the project just kind of looks complete on the back. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And don't forget that I have an Etsy shop full of all sorts of punch needle kits and accessories and things like that. So check it out in the link in the description box down below. Again, thanks for watching this video today and I will see you in the next one. Bye.